The invention of television has made it possible for us to communicate through a combination of sights and sounds. Modern means of communication have overcome the ancient barriers of time and distance. Hey, hey, don't touch that channel selector. In which is visible a whole new era of communication. In one generation, voice and vision have transcended space. Science, engineering, and organization have harnessed the ratio between light and sound. Hey, I told you not to touch the selector. This is all for you. 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 Psychological warfare has been waged against America for much of this century. This war for the mind of the public has been facilitated by the emergence of mass media and the transformation of American education by behavioral psychologists. In the book 1984, George Orwell warned that people were in danger of losing their human qualities and freedom of mind without being aware of it while it was happening because of psychological, emotional, and intellectual manipulation. Mind control. Mind control in America. The most effective way to protect yourself from subconscious manipulation is by being aware of how it works. What the conscious mind believes, the subconscious acts on. It works like programming a computer. Information is fed into a computer, and the computer acts on it. However, if the information fed into the computer is wrong, it still acts on it. If a person believes something that is not true, the memory banks of the subconscious mind do not correct the error, but act on it. The theory of cognitive dissonance holds that the mind automatically and involuntarily rejects information not in line with previously accepted thoughts and beliefs. Watching television often produces an altered state of consciousness. Though not consciously perceived, the television screen, while appearing static, actually flickers. Any repeating light or sound pattern can lead you into an altered state. A hypnotist uses patterned speech by varying the pacing and inflection of his voice to induce the state of mind in his subject. It is in this state of mind where one is the most receptive to mental programming. Whether or not the information takes hold in the mind depends on two factors. Trust in the source of the information and repetition of the message. Trust in the source of the information induces acceptance of the message as true even if it is not understood. Repetition of the message embeds it in the subconscious so that acceptance of its truth and accuracy becomes a conditioned response. Thus, this information will be accepted as true without thinking about it whenever it is presented again.
out of the normality of their existence, you know, they see this joy just transfuse them, and that's because they got an intimation of genuine meaning, and it's odd, and it's, it's, it's not amenable to rational criticism, which is the thing that I thought that struck me as so miraculous about music, and why it has this element of salvation, it's like, it puts you directly in touch with the meaning that sustains you in life, directly. to observe the harmonious interplay of the patterns of being stacked on top of one another and then to bring yourself into alignment with that
Tesla, partner X wrestler, he days for Tesla, partner X wrestler, yo. He days for Cheska, partner Express, yo.
to be loved. Unfamiliar places. Unfamiliar places. 
unfamiliar people, unfamiliar places, unfamiliar people, unfamiliar places, unfamiliar people. We tell our friends we don't care, so they don't know that we share a common desire to be loved. Unfamiliar places
discussions. Ignorant debaters. Traumatic repercussions. Alternate realities. Cynical hostility. Toxic ideology. Hive mind mentality. Cancel culture.
wrong people are in power and the wrong people are out of power. That the wealth is distributed in this country and the world in such a way as not simply to require a small reform, but to require a drastic reallocation of wealth. I start from the supposition that we don't have to say too much about this because all we have to do is think about the state of the world today and realize that things are all upside down. But you have to get a little detached and then come back and look at the world and you are horrified. Welcome to the world, baby boy, I'll paint you red and white and blue The indoctrination starts as soon as you come out the womb Pretty quick, we'll make you stupid with curriculums at school And if the classroom doesn't do the trick, we'll make you watch the news Pick your team, right or left, pick the red pill or the blue You can vote, but even if you win, still everyone will lose Don't forget to buy designer, because Gucci makes you cool We prioritize material belongings over truth Get a job that you can't stand, so you can buy some cans of food Go overseas and die for freedom, there's some oil we can use Our democracy exists so that you think that you can choose But our algorithms Make you do what we want you to do What's the problem? You're depressed, society has you confused We got medication for you that you'll probably abuse Go get married to a lady who also don't have a clue And pump out a few babies that are just the same as you Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all Here inside the system, violence is a symptom Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all Here inside the system, violence is a symptom Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong Welcome to the world, baby girl, I'll paint you pink if that's okay We'll encourage self-destruction through the music that you play We divided out of men by trying politics and race And honestly, it's working awesome, so for you, we'll do the same Never teaching you to love yourself, inject you full of hate Objectify your sexuality, then blame you for the rape And weaponize the differences that make our men and women great Then just to screw with you, erase the genders Everyone's the same! We'll empower you with rights to vote and fight for equal pay Then have the men turn into women and you'll fight for them again But you thought you had it figured out, but everything has changed Welcome to the system, bitch! Please enjoy your stay! Here's a Bible and a bottle of the cheapest booze we make Find a man who can take care of you to fill the holes we made Buy a house and settle down, fulfill your duty, procreate And make a couple babies who will also do the same Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all Here inside the system, violence is a symptom Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all Here inside the system, violence is a symptom Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong Welcome to the world, everybody. I'ma paint you black and white. I'ma make you hate each other so that everyone will fight. I'ma give you our religion, let the righteous find the light. But I will also give you science to oppose the word of Christ. And I'ma give you borders, they're imaginary lines. If you cross them, go to war and win when everybody dies. And I'ma give you money that you'll value more than life. And let the 1% have everything while you fight to survive. And then I'll give you politics, I'll call it left and right. And while you divide yourselves, I will conquer both the sides. Can't you see? I'm the system, my whole purpose is divide. What you choose will never matter because everything Everything is mine. Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim. Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all. Here inside the system, violence is a symptom. Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong. Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim. Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all. Here inside the system, violence is a symptom. Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong. Welcome to the system, everyone's a victim. Doesn't matter if you're black or white, it hates you all. Here inside the system, violence is a symptom. Fighting for what's right, but somehow everyone is wrong. Um... Son of a bitch. <laughs>
Now get up. Get up. up.
I have some ideas on how you should spend me.
body, no spirit. All spirit, no body. All body, no spirit. All spirit, no brain. All brains, no body. And hold it. This script isn't going anywhere. tape this tape will have two masters this tape and another tape or in the case that you are listening to the other tape this tape and the other tape but you cannot serve two masters <sighs>
recording because the other tape ran out.
this broken So I climbed up I was held back By my own mind I feel alive I feel so alive Now I see the beauty Colors in the sky
with other civilizations is no longer something beyond our dreams.
say what you do Life's a joke It's a game of luck And time's up
Everybody does, yeah, that's okay, yeah. So slide over here and give me a moment. Your moves are so raw. I've got to let you know. I've got to let you know. I need you tonight Cause I'm not sleeping There's something about you, girl That makes me sweat Thank you. 
have a harder time When there's no enemy to blame It doesn't matter how many were killed The debate is the same Is it alright to hunt or just shoot for fun? Is the protection we need from the gun? The blame is always placed on someone It's always how the story is fun Only a lunatic would sell a lunatic a gun
and we just can't seem to stop it. I've heard a few things about systems that help me to understand why <clears throat> such a thing might be possible. The system is essentially functioning on its own. So it's like a sort of a set of coordinates which behind it has an energy that's pushing towards a particular agenda, the kind of ones that all of us can identify, financial agenda, dominion, those kind of identifiable agenda. But the, the system is self-sustaining, self-maintaining. The system excludes the possibility for disruption. It's almost like it already functions how an algorithm would function. It doesn't afford radicalism. It doesn't afford the intervention of democracy. When people's will is expressed, the will is delegitimized. When a figure, like when there is a sort of a popular uprising, then the uprising itself is discredited. The system has clearly become more alive with a particular aspect of the establishment, although it feels to me that it can function perfectly well regardless of which political parties. I think it's self-sustaining, self-maintaining. The system excludes the possibility for disruption. It's almost like it already functions how the algorithm
to know how long we've been here. Now, weeks, months, you know how I know it. Shall I tell you more?
that day. Washed ashore on a godforsaken beach, Johnny waited five whole days before he realized he'd been left for dead. He had avoided going into the dense green inferno of the rainforest, but as the days passed on, he became tired, thirsty, and full of desperation. It was at this point he realized his only chance was to go into the jungle. of the jungle.
they're asking, why do they hate us?
of aggression towards people, even when technology distances you from her to make it easier to carry out. Being brought up in a culture of domination and control has affected the way you look at the world, even down to the sensory. Your senses have been controlled and enslaved since birth to mistake movement and progress. Say you were a musician. You would hear the world in a different way. It is true. Very, very true. Good vibe that I come with no fear from the lion's mouth. My grades for us the crude map of reality that we see. A lot of the way that our senses perceive the world has been socially conditioned into us just based on the tendencies of the culture we happen to be born into. To chase the next pleasing sensory experience through buying some product. Conscious lyrics. Life is a constant back and forth between, on one hand, unpleasing sensory experience while performing alienated labor. When you play that game in eight hours a day, you are seeing the world in a different way. And then on the other hand, buying products and services, chasing a pleasing sensory experience to make them feel better, all constantly trapped in this self-perpetuating loop of being run down from your work, then buying products that make you feel better. To be my own, I only serve one mark. Bad sensory experience at work, good sensory experience from buying products. We need to emancipate our senses from this trap. In order to be wise in this time, you have to be mad to the majority. And so I have to be mad. This is a complete refusal to support in any way wanton acts of aggression towards people, even when technology distances you from them to make it easier to carry out. Mad to the point of sanity. But not being the kind of person that looks at who you are as a person, in relation to stuff you own and consume. To define who you are as a person by things like, oh, well, I'm really into gadgets, so I stand in line and I buy a new phone every year right when they come out, that's just who I am. Drink away your feelings of alienation and want, taking a close mental note of the products the TV tells you are gonna solve that feeling of alienation you're trying to escape. To allow products and the work you have to do to get more of those products to define who you are as a person. It's to take a close examination of not only the products you want, but why exactly it is you want. This is a commitment to not constantly chase the next product, and to actually do the things the ads promise us the products are going to bring us. Building close human relationships, creating things rather than consuming things. This is a complete refusal to support in any way wanton acts of aggression towards people, even when technology distances you from them to make it easier to carry out. Technological aggression. Technology distances people from the act of aggression. Drone strikes. How much easier is it to sell to people that we're gonna go over and bomb a group of people with a considerable amount of civilian casualties if you don't have to send your sons and daughters over to fight the war? How much easier is carrying out acts of aggression when it's as simple as the push of a button, where you don't have to look the people in the eye that you're doing it to because of some sort of technology? Now the extreme example is drone strikes. This applies to many aspects of society. Take the internet, for example. How easy is it for somebody to post a comment and contribute to this culture of aggression? See somebody they disagree with, aggressively coming at them, asserting their intellectual dominance over them, but not really opening up anyone's mind to anything. How much easier is it to participate in that activity when you don't have to look the person in the eye you're saying that to? How much easier is it to sit around and use products like Facebook, products like your iPhone, to appease these aggressive instincts and create the cheap illusion of you protesting, when in reality you are as complicit in the forces of domination as someone who never opens a book in their life? How do you convince people to make more of a sacrifice than hitting a little retweet icon that's the extent to which they're going to protest? Black people's music is everybody's music because in the music we are lead got triggered in the past of righteousness. This is a complete refusal to support in any way wanton acts of aggression towards people, even when technology distances you from them to make it easier to carry out.
one step becomes a death of selfish, unwise decisions made by selfish, unwise people. Where you go home with just enough energy to mindlessly watch a trip, drift, and lethargic entity entertain. Where any moment without the next dopamine hit is a moment to waste. Where you wake up in a pod, go back to work, feeling like a corporate slave master. Only for you to repeat the same cycle every day, with every week, or every month. Thing. But for those of you who know that this isn't the life you want, for those of you who want to escape, those of you who no longer want to watch life in stands, those of you who don't want to live through other people's stories, if this is you, then escaping this trap will change the trajectory of your life. At the end of this a way to life, has been taken away from you. But if you're ready for this, then we need to start feeling back the lens. The ambition and drive to follow your curiosity has been crushed, so you've become undisciplined. Why would you want to put yourself through the pain of constant work, practice, and routine? There's no payoff at the end. What's the point to struggle? without reward. By subconsciously adopting this mindset, you start to become devoid of passion and curiosity. Instead, you most likely turn to fake instant gratification passions. Passions like video games, Netflix, social media, and vaping. This is why we live in a generation where almost everyone needs some sort of life coach or therapist to tell them what to do. As I mentioned earlier, you were taught to devalue your time. You were also taught that work is supposed to be boring and handed down to you by a teacher or a boss. However, by being accustomed to this way of thinking, you're destined to be poor and miserable. Because in reality, the time you spend working has no real correlation to the money that you make. You most likely waste six hours a day watching things that you don't care about and you're supposed to make you feel empty. So why is this no longer the case? And even more importantly, why is our society now being throttled into such a downward spiral? Do you now work for someone else? You rent from someone else and you have nothing to show for it. You work for corporations that have amassed more power than countries while you yourself have no power. Why your subconscious outrage and despair is buried under an avalanche of cultural driven. Abandoned by leaders who abandon the masses by the way of education and upbringing. Abandoned by leaders through their reckless actions, through quantity easing, money printing, and inflation. Over 40% of all US dollars were printed in 2020, which is why you might start to notice that life has become a lot more expensive. I mean, the total money supply has increased by 336% in the last year and a half. This is money that is printed out of nothing. And this is new money that is dilating the value of every existing dollar you burn it. And the truth is, the situation is far worse than these numbers as much suggest, with massive inflation, no home ownership, no community, this is what keeps you oppressed. You can't rise up in a society that rules the game by no longer people. Our entire economy has become centered around a crony capitalist system that eviscerates the family, leading to misery, atomization, and existential despair. Because by this point in our globalized, atomized, depressed, and lonely society, the elites no longer care for their population. The backbone of democracy in Western civilization is being desecrated, and at the same time, everyone is atomized, depressed, and lonely. Because thanks to the complete failure of hypercapitalism to enrich our lives with any purpose or meaning, we have to cope with all this by numbing ourselves with drugs and liquor and turning to the room. But at least you can get the next Starbucks pumpkin latte, the next gadget, the next pill. At least you have the freedom to be a soulless shell of a human being. At least you have the freedom to slave away at a corporate job to make ends meet. At least you have the freedom to waste your life watching an endless loop of nine realistic barren distractions. All of this has happened because America and the UK now live in a new class system. No one likes to mention it. The media ignores it, YouTubers run away from it, but it's the ugly truth. In any normal society, this would have forced change in the status quo. But in our society, political parties have now merged into one. And it's no exaggeration when I say that this is how great civilizations collapse. Great civilizations collapse when the leaders work against the interests of the people. But on a personal level, you can't escape the situation. You don't have to live like that. This whole situation changes when we each take on personal responsibility to attend to ourselves and communities. If you want the freedom to raise a family, freedom to escape corporate hell and reinvigorate your cycle, you must begin to see work as a play. You must decondition yourself from all these toxic mindsets sealed into you by state education. You need to build up the slow habits that will instill in you discipline. You need to cut out the sugar, cut out the lethargic, the constant social media dribble on your mind. You need to reject the toxic junk that's continually stuffed into your cycle, constantly to your creativity and potential. You need to pay the game and pay it against you. Because when you embark on a part of you become dangerous. And when enough people begin to take control of their lives, this will force a radical improvement across all of society. It's just when you've been numbed to the classic atmosphere of collective level that society becomes so stagnant and unequal. The formulas of reform, the formulas of freedom, the formulas of happiness falls down to this. Health, plus wealth, plus good relationships, equals happiness. Focus on these three things. The things that have been destroyed in our society, destroyed by others, destroyed by people.